What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is week number six in the NFL, and the Chicago Bears, living their best life, look like they're going to go to four and two. And the Jacksonville Jaguars look like they're going to go to one and five right now. Um, the Bears are up twenty to three, just getting another touchdown um, pass from here. And it's amazing to me because you know all I ever hear is you know well Dak Prescott, you know he's a sixty million dollar quarterback, and we always quantitate with Dak Prescott how much money. Well, you know the Cowboys they're paying him all this money, and it's his job to make the team win well i hear what you're saying on that but it's kind of amazing that the jaguars are going to go to one and five trevor lawrence is six tds and two interceptions in six games and i don't ever hear anything about trevor lawrence in that situation i just don't i don't hear anybody you know the commentators talking about well trevor lawrence he's got to elevate his team to do better than this the team has literally scored three points three points and you could arguably say on their home field because they're always playing in england that's their home away from home and it's just kind of crazy now this week in the nfc east this is a big week this week could be cray cray You've got the Washington Commanders that are playing the Ravens. Um, you know, they're six and a half point underdogs. Uh, they could end up going to four and three um, right there, being able to be closer, you know, making a tighter race. I, I really don't think they're going to beat Baltimore, but then again, this is the NFL. Anything can happen. You've got the Eagles that are two and two, could go three and two if they beat the Cleveland Browns, but they could just as easily. As poorly as they've played, understand, I believe they're three and eight in their last um, 11 games. They have not played good football in a long time, and they have yet to score a point in the first quarter of any game this season. And Nick Seriani is truly on the hot seat when you literally have people saying, maybe Kellen Moore should be the starting quarterback. And that's how far that team has fallen. And then if we want to go even further, We've got our Cowboys that are at three and two that they could potentially tie up with the Washington Commanders. I mean, Washington is, yeah, Washington is four and two. No, four and one, excuse me, four and one. They could potentially tie up with the Commanders if they get a win or be part of the log jam in the middle um, if they lose. And then we could go even further where the New York stinking Jets. The loss to the Commanders at the moment doesn't look quite as bad because they kept the Commanders out of the end zone where literally the Commanders scored seven field goals and they have a really good defense that they could beat Cincinnati, which is another team where Joe Burrow got paid and Cincinnati is not looking good either. So it's just kind of amazing how all of these things go full circle and clearly one of the storylines you have to look at right now is the Cowboys have been killed because they say that the Joneses don't care about winning, that they haven't signed any free agents, and that they're you know, basically suckage. They stink. But lo and behold, the Cowboys did really nothing of note in free agency, signing Dalvin Cook, which was one of their bigger signings, who hasn't come off of the practice squad bringing back Zeke, who is hardly playing at all, Eric Kendricks being probably the best move they made in free agency. Unfortunately, he's not playing today, but leads the team in tackles that you could make an argument that the Cowboys' um, lack of free agency moves have been better than some teams that have made a lot of free agency moves, a la the Eagles. The Eagles at the moment... They probably have the best free agent signing in getting Saquon Barkley. But you can also look and say they've also made some of the worst ones with Devin White, who got $4 million and has been released without playing a single play. You can also say um, Huff 
is another one that is not paying off whatsoever, um, as well as even uh, the trade that they made for uh, Dobbs. Um, so, you know, it'll be interesting as we go forward. These are some of the storylines that I'm looking forward to. Um, San Francisco getting back on track, of course, getting their win against the Seattle Seahawks. And so many teams that we thought were going to be really good teams somehow now aren't quite as good as we thought. Seattle started out 3-0 and and has now lost three. Uh, New Orleans started out 2-0 and and mollywopped us. All of a sudden has lost a couple in a row. Um, Baltimore, which was atrocious the first two weeks, and now has become back again being a juggernaut. But with this being an NFL week-to-week league that you just don't know what to expect, um, you just don't know what to expect. And so, you know, we're going to be sitting here on the seat of our pants enjoying uh, another week in the NFL and hoping that my Cowboys can find a way to get a win um, one way or another against the Detroit Lions. And the Lions team that – and I want to check something here – the Lions team, which people right now are kind of saying is the best team in football, um, where they've said that the Lions have, uh, that everybody that's played the Lions the next week has lost. I want to look back on their schedule because, I, and I don't, I don't mean any disrespect to the Lions. I mean, they beat Seattle at home 42-29. to 29. Um they beat the Cardinals 2013. Um, they lost to Tampa Bay. They beat the Rams 26 to 20. So as I look at that, the Rams are not real good. Tampa, they lost to Tampa Bay, which is playing really, really well. They beat the Cardinals, although you can say the Cardinals had the win against San Francisco. And the Seahawks are now on a three-game lose streak. So you have to look at that and say maybe Seattle was a little bit overrated. And this is the great thing about football. You just don't know what you don't know. Um, We'll see what we're going to see. I'm going to say that this Cowboys offense, this will be the best quarterback that they'll face so far this year. I know some people may disagree with me. They'll say Baker Mayfield is is really good, or they might say that Matthew Stafford is really good. But Matthew Stafford is not, oh, my God, what a horrendous, that pass. Trevor Lawrence is just, I I, I don't want to hear anybody else talking about Dak Prescott and how much money he gets paid. He had a guy who beat his man, and he, I mean, literally beat his man by four yards and underthrows the football that it literally hit the guy who was behind him, okay? Hit a linebacker. Okay, I want you to understand this. Linebacker is covering wide receiver who's got about five yards. Trevor Lawrence underthrows it so bad that it hits the linebacker in the back. Yeah. Third and five, and there we go. They get the first down. So that's the storylines that I'm working on for today. And, um... Hopefully, the Cowboys will find a way to get a win and get closer to the top of the division. But this whole day could end up being a logjam in the NFC East. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you guys at 1145. Peace.